I still still remember personally the time when Lugaya first came, the Menekaviet Arbor. And of course, uh, Eina Antinoja, being a close friend, was one of the key influencers in our thinking and our love of the race. But there are not enough of us who know how important the offshore yachts in Finland at the time were. And I'm so happy to have the number one authority, Lars Trim, to share those times with us. Lars, please. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. And thank you for inviting me the second time. I will talk basically about two SFS designs built in series and then some individual boats. The, the first was number 1710. Uh, they were not built only in Finland, but in many other places, and altogether 17 yards in the world. And they also are not identical. Most yards built only a few pieces, but the Nello and Noto are exceptions because they are built in glass fiber. And in Finland there were three yards. Vator, I use the Finnish pronunciation, and Antinoja and Noto. The difference went in the rudder. You can see that the later boats had a separate rudder. Uh, the very basic uh, origin of this 1710 was Hestia, which is a very well known boat long, long ago. And the 1710 is identical except the transom. You can see this boat has a reversed boat, if you call it a classical transom. But two other things are interesting. But the mast is in the middle of the saloon, and the tiller is on the off deck. Because the other boats do not have these features. Uh, Sparkman and Stevens have a very good arc like which they nowadays have, have, have donated to the to a museum uh, is, is, uh, in, in the Northern America uh, to name and for what for the moment. But anyway, from there, you can get copies of the old designs, if, if you need. Uh, and SFS have kept nice records. This is the schedule of owners, the first page for the 1710. No, this is the second page. This is, this is the first page, yes. Because Cantere Benello was the original customer to Parkman and Stevens. And you can imagine that this is an Italian yard. So they ordered the first design. Then Parkman and Stevens uses a C and a number to distinguish all the customers. So for example, you can see here Diana, the one top, one ton cup winner, 65, is, uh, was C, C6. Here is the first water boat in Finland, C-19. But Antinoja was not much 
behind Peter at no, <coughs> sea 22. And the boat was named Hope Maris. I don't think you can see that in the back. So here we have 25 of these boats. In the next page, we have another about the same number. And here, here is water number two, C36. Then I put in a remark here because Sibele has been for sale lately and the broker claims that she won the wanton cock. That's not true. <laughs> but she, she participated. <laughs> here, for the first time, you see the name Koskenkula. He is the founder of, of Noto. And he ordered a boat for Mr. Koristo, which many of you may remember, he was the Commodore of Merengabiet. <coughs> so the deal was that Koskenkula builds the boat in wood for Mr. Koristo, and then he could use the wooden hull as a plug for his GRP series. But meanwhile, Benello was building quite a number of boats. And here we have the second Koskenkula boat, Tarantella, Ramschmidt, and then for some reason, here is the name Gordebach, I believe. But he didn't take delivery of the boat. Uh, maybe it was not even sold to him because the story goes that Koskenkula had to present three <coughs> deals to Fagman and Stevens before he got the right to start building the boats. So maybe this was a little optimistic at the time. But anyway, he got started. C-51 was named Castet, and that was the famous 36 that won seven out of seven in Kauf Week and started the story making Notor known worldwide. And that was also the official C number, number 51. The, the mother of all the GRP versions of the one <coughs> thirty six. So you can see that the Sparkman and Stevens did not at all design this one thirty six only for Norton, but for fifty four others at least. But still, there may be some difference in the execution. Here you find some famous <coughs> names from that time amongst the clients. This is Benello's design, it's called Gaia, and they built 19 holes. And you can see here that the mast is in the forward end of the saloon and the, the tiller is in the cockpit. And the, the rudder is attached to the keel. Here are the bottle built boats. The first one is in Germany, presented in the yacht fairly recently. Actually, it has not been known where, where it is until last year. It was known that it was sold to Germany, and uh, actually the, 
Uh, <laughs> okay, why? The, the German classic register had it listed, so I believe it could be fine. Found there. It, it's a very good register. And the second one was Palomita. Then there is a misconception in the Water book about Sibeli. She was not being part in at all. Sparkman Steven provided type plans to the yards, helping them to uh, build as intended, as the designer's intention was. And here is a list of the type plans provided to Vavator. And for example, the, the offsets are given in feet, inches, and age, which is rather unknown in here in our metric country. So I think the Vavator has had to scratch their heads a little bit to get it right. But anyway, they, they succeeded. This was First of it, then the type plans. They are still visible on the SDS blog spot if you want to see type plans. <coughs> you go there. And here's a nice feature. Uh, Mr. Nemes' first name was Yussi, and this is phonetically correct. <laughs> so, maybe that. <laughs> Paul Stevens didn't remember his first name, but it was something like Yussi. <laughs> and Rod Stevens had an own New York 32. Uh, many of the type plans are originating from, from his Mustang. Uh, little history. At the 20 years anniversary, the first wooden boat, that means the plug of the whole series, was brought to, to the yard. And actually, they had 102 foot up at the moment building. So, this is the family portrait and me is here in the front row. <laughs> Then the other main group of failures was the 1767. There was again a, a base design. That means at, at that time, naval architects usually copied the old drawings and made small modifications uh, because you had to do everything by hand, so it was not very wise to start from the beginning every time. And eight yards built this design, most used wood. And here, it's remarkable that there was a yard in Finland named Texoglas in Hamenlinna. They built ten yachts. Uh, it is called SS-40. Then later, the molds were sold to Turku, to Terashauste. They built six yachts under a different, different name, Aquarius-40. There is the schedule of owners for these boats. Uh, the blue missions are mine. I have been able to trace quite a lot of, of them. Uh, Isadora is in Finland, and also uh, many of these other textile balls. Eva, Buhu, 
Tom is built in good by Wallstedt, and she is in Finland. Now she is a sister here. Sorry? Pandora is funny again. Oh, thank you. Well, let's add another comment. And Paul, Paul maintained a preview of this. It's called Nefertiti, and it's in Finland as well. Yeah, but good comments. <laughs> if you go to keep track of, of all these things, this was done some a couple of years ago, so things have changed. Anyway, there are 10 boats by Texoglass listed, and they are <coughs> stopped existing after delivering these boats. So it was a set up as a temporary yard. And the, the main force was Mr. Oke Lindqvist, the chief voice surveyor in Finland at the time. He took the word of, of Eva to as his own boat. And here is the original wooden design with dog, dog house. And that was built by Gredana Martinson on the west coast of Sweden. They built three of these. And they actually delivered two of them the same spring. I think that's quite remarkable for a small yard without two such boats at the same time. And here the rudder is attached to the keel. And this is the Texoglass version it has a long coach roof. And also the rudder is here, but there are some with separate rudders. There are drawings of, of this variation made, but it's not quite clear which of them have it. Maybe some owners could report. And uh, if you look closely at this drawing, I would suggest that it shows an aluminium construction, but it does not matter. It's intended to show the general arrangement. Here is the list of boats built by Eino Antinoja. And there is the 1710 Uhmari, the second of his production. Uh, the first one is the special marks because it cannot be found in Spartan and Stevens both registers or design registers. Uh, so it has not <coughs> officially been recorded in the SFS offices, but it's believed that this design number was used as a base, and maybe they changed the French basing or something to, to make a slightly different boat. Anyway, the boat is still existing and in good shape. There you have the Legaia. It's a slightly bigger one, 42 feet. <coughs> Mary Murray. And then in the 70s, Antinoia built boats in series. So these are the first of each of the, of the series. And then some smaller boats in water tonner. And other SDS designs. Uh, the very first one has to be Albertina, 1939, built by Obu Botvar. And it's a stock design. 
That means it, it's not done for a particular client, but as it has, has it in the drawer and sells it to whoever is willing to, to buy. And then the second one was a 5.5 meter. Then, then Circe, uh, the Americans say Sires, and Fincraft were built in Hanko. Uh, not many boats that they are didn't survive for long. So there, there are only a few ones. Bluebird was a small water tunnel built in Turku and Ogelimpist ordered a half tunnel for himself. But that never finished because he had a serious accident and could not take delivery of the boat. So it has been sold to other people. But once he was, his yard located in, in the Pietasari area where Baltic and Northern both are, are also located. Here is a nice brochure of Albertina. The overboard were drilled. Uh, it's not known if this boat still exists. Uh, the owner lived in Viipuri and it's not clear what happened with the boat when borders changed and these other events happened there. This is the 5.5. It's uh, downloaded from Sparkman and Stevens' website. You can see the letters <laughs> at the bottom. That's Circe. Uh, I would think that the boom is rather high up, but there's no risk of hitting one's head with this arrangement. This is a fin craft. It looked rather special because it had a flush deck, very high freeboard, and full windows. That's the Bluebird water tunnel. Uh, rather beamy and round little boat, but much room inside. That's the quarter tonnen. And advance 40, which has several keel variations shown. And there are some other designs in Finland nowadays. There's a search number three built by Neglinge then there are IW and uh, prospect of Whitby is a very special boat. It's built in aluminium and probably the only Huisman built yacht in Finland. Huisman is a very high reputation aluminium yard in Holland. And then uh, a very special boat uh, by Lante called Wahlstedt. It has an interesting history because Wahlstedt built an identical <coughs> boat, what was named K. And then when this owner was in the harbor somewhere, a man came along and said, I want to buy this boat. It is the price, and finally he sold, <coughs> he sold the boat, and then he had another identical build by Wallstedt again.
this is the pilot 35, that means the seal set call three and get IW31 and 34. This is a very popular boat. There are new builds all the time, uh, mostly in Australia. And they, they do vacuum in the house, for example. It's interesting that they have given a new life to an old design. And this is 30. There's the prospect, the aluminium bought by Huisman. And it has a, a trim tab on the keel. Means the end of the keel has a, a tab. And an interesting detail here is, this is the original rowing. The wheel is at the front end of the cockpit. And there was a special reason for that, because the owner had only one leg. And he had to <coughs> arrange his moving in the boat so he didn't fall over too often. It was, <laughs> it was, by the way, strictly forbidden to help him up if he fall over. So he had such a philosophy. <laughs> he had many boats named Prospect of Whitby, if you look in the history, and was a successful racer. This is the Vailante. Uh, it's a cruising boat, quite clearly. And it can be said that most of the dimensions are about twice compared to ordinary boats. Everything is done very, very strongly. And that makes it a good cruising boat, has nice movement in, in waves and does not jump around very much. Uh, here are some references if you are interested uh, to the books and the yachting magazine. And the, this is the Sparkman and Stevens book. Here you can find the designs from 65 years of Sparkman and Stevens activity. There are lots of interesting information. Thank you.